Happy Thursday afternoon, everybody. Tom Matuska and Brett Wingfield again on behalf of the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company um, in Spirit Lake, Iowa. And we just came off of a, um, a really nice 4th of July weekend. Long I think weekend. we had a little bit of rain, but not very much. And, and uh, it was a beautiful, it was nice. beautiful weekend. A um, lot, of, lot of campers, a lot of boaters, a um, yep. lot of skiers. Um, Barbecue everybody, grills in full swing. Oh gosh, everybody enjoying the um, weekend. Uh, we had a lot of, lot of uh, boaters. Is that, a, can they see that picture? Um, oh. If any of you want to know what it's like in Iowa Great Lakes <laughs> on one of our major weekends, um, there's a couple of pictures I think Kate put up of what you might expect. Yeah. What and do you, they call that? Lake effect? Lake effect. Yeah. And uh, you do not want to be in the middle of that. Maybe you do. I think Mandy. There's see, Mandy. Right there, there's Mandy right there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, if you are in the middle of that, you're going to stay there yeah. <laughs> uh, for a while because it's difficult navigating in and out of that. But um, that's what Lake Okoboji looks like on yeah. um, Sunday evening. Was it Monday? I bet that was probably Saturday. 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 Okay, Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. So I bet all weekend. I, and I bet it's almost like that this during the week too. Yeah, and that's that's what we um, have a lot of times on our major weekends, big rafts of boats like that. Anyway, last week I think we showed them uh, the elk base. We worked on the elk a little yeah. bit and yeah. that big deer, and yeah. um, we still are going to show you some pictures of those when we finally when they're done get them completed. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we've been in the taxidermy business for. You're, you're edging up on me. You're getting in it as long as I oh, have been, and I've been so in it for <laughs> 40, 5, 6, 7 I'm years. A long ways from there. Um, and things point. have changed a lot since paper forms. Um, we're going to deal with ear liners a little bit today. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, everybody says, <laughs> back in the day, we used real, honest to God, sheets of lead for our bears and small mammals and we would take the cartilage out and we would trace it on a sheet of lead, cut it out with the scissors. Um, it was kind of wow. like a, they don't make lead toothpaste anymore, do they? <laughs> they used to be so. lead too. Um, but anyway, out of a piece of lead and you were able to scratch up that lead, sure. it, a texture that glue would hold to, and then you could shape it. You could shape it beautifully, whether yeah. it was before you put it in the ear skin or afterwards. Um, and the way we do it today is not that far removed from that, but they took the lead away from us. Yeah. Um, dinosaurs didn't have real big ears. Yeah, though, that dinosaurs they didn't. They didn't. Stuck pretty good. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that want to be taxidermists. Um, there's a lot of people out there that have, you know, are quite accomplished taxidermists, and then you have everything in between. Um, yeah. I always tell people, and we, when we were interviewing students, if you want to be a taxidermist, you have to be better cleaner, neater, more innovative, and more precise than the guy down the street. Yep. Um, there's a lot of taxidermists out there, but there's not a lot of good taxidermists. Um, very, good very taxidermists true. are, I don't want to say rare, with, with social media and shows like this and um, state um, competitions, yeah. world, national competitions, um, the great DVD series of Cole Kirkshanks and yeah, things like that. Um, it's easier for people to learn than ever before, but you have to do things better. Um, mediocre taxidermy is gonna command a mediocre price, uh, yep. mediocre customer base, uh, and it's gonna be a struggle to make a living in this yep. business. Very much so, very, very much. So I think uh, we showed you um, pedestal mounts a little bit and um, we showed you how to sculpt the back, how to alter forms. We showed you how to put the um, cork on the back of a mannequin. Yep. Little extras that don't take a lot of time. They don't cost a lot, but it's something that your customers will notice. And you may just get more customers with yep. the better work that you do. So today um, we've been working on, you got this Eland pretty close to ready to go. Yep. And you know, when you get into a, uh, Ears. I know some of you are using um, auto body putty ears, Lots of and ears out there. I have no problem with. Uh, I might sound like I'm not in favor of uh, bondo oh, ears, no. but done well, and there's not 
an overabundance of people that can do it well. Done well, I've seen some exceptional yeah. bonded I ear agree. method. I agree, there's some really good bondo ears, but you gotta know your process and you gotta know your ears to make a good bondo yep. ear. Um, and if you can't get ear liners, that's, that's the route to go yep. too. Yep. So um, whichever, way, whichever way you wanna do it, um, I think if I were gonna do a bonded ear method for a better mount, I would maybe do the Auto Buddy Putty insert, pull it out, and then yeah. fine tune it, and then glue yep. it in. Yeah, I think is a better way to do that. But uh, some of you do some excellent bonded ears, mm -hmm. and I don't want to change your system. If you're happy with what you get, stick with it. Um, we're going to use ear liners on an yep. on an Eland, and if you go to any of the catalogs, you will find every style of whitetail ear in a plastic version, in a fabric version. Um, I, even, I didn't bring it over, we even have a rubber version yep. Um, yep. Of, of ear liners. And the reason is, is because the taxidermy supply companies sell a couple hundred thousand or way more than that, I suppose, of plastic ear liners, and it justifies an injection molded system. Um, Eland, not so many Eland ears or um, ostrich ears or whatever right. kind of critter you have, so um, you're limited into what kind of ear, ear you can use. We're fortunate to have the trademark series of fabric ears, and this is, uh, they're similar to this. This is a, a fabric ear that you came up with, and um, I mean, it's got a texture on it. Yep. Um, it's flexible. It will hold its shape very, very nice. And we have them in, I'm just looking, maybe uh, 30 species of North American animals, oh, yeah. as well as 40 plus species of African animals. Just looking through the list, if you look in the catalog, um, I mean, I think we have three sets of three sizes of kudu. Um, we have a monster listing, a yeah. um, couple sizes of gemsbuck. Uh, Cape Buffalo, all different kind of ears. If you want something really rigid, you can get them double, made yes, double. Yeah. And those are made right here. Special. And these are our Eland ear. Yeah. And they're flexible that they will go in very easily. They and trim and nice. Do as you well. have uh, your cartilage there? Anywhere? I do. I do. Um, I think that's another big part of using a good ear liner is making sure that you can get the cartilage. Now, out if well. you're uh, um, you're gonna you're gonna order a set of eland ears or zebra ears or whatever it happens to be. Now we have one size of ear liner, and you may have four or five different choices of zebra critters. Um, by taking the cartilage out, if you can remove the cartilage in one piece, you can use that for a pattern, and you can wrap it around your ear. Now realize that if you wrap it around the outside, it's going to be a little bigger. If you wrap it around the inside, it's going to be a little smaller, but it'll give you a real good idea of the size, and that is about as perfect as you can get. Now this was this was just a eighth inch big, and I think you trimmed it, right? I did just a tiny little bit over on this side, it, just to match our animal. And that's one of the nice things about the fabric here is it trims so easily. But um, that's uh. That's just comparing the cartilage to the ear liner. We had a fellow work here um, one time that whenever he prepped a cape, or a cape and you know who I'm talking about, oh, I um, he <laughs> would take the cartilage out in one piece and he was excellent at doing that. Just, I mean, it was so impressive yeah. to see him remove yeah. ear cartilage. And then he would take a little zip tie and he'd punch a little hole under both um, ear liner cartilages, and when we went to mount the animal, um, this was zip tied to the back of the cape, yep. and we snipped it, and all we had to do, whether it was a deer or an elk or whatever it happened to be, we compare it, compare it to the ear liner that we had intended to use, and we knew if we were in the ballpark. Yep. So these are pretty, pretty helpful to have. And some of them, some ear cartilage comes off really easy. Um, these happen to come off really nice. Some don't. Um, bears. Buffalo and bear. Uh, buffalo, <laughs> buffalo can be elk a... Can be a, elk can be rough too. Um, but if you can get them out in one piece, that's just great information there. So, 
We've selected an airliner. This is a trademark Eland airline, airliner, fabric airliner. Um, they already have a cloth texture. It's like gauze. It's mm -hmm. like, like plastic impregnated gauze. Um, so on one side it has a texture. On the inside it also has a texture, but because of the way they're made with a heat process, um, the inside will be a little smoother. So we want to rough these up slightly. And um, we used to even take, what did we take? A drill and we drill little holes in a lot and of that's our airliners. How we did it when I was did that a lot, yep. didn't we? Yep, drilled um, a lot of holes. But we're just going to scratch this with a detail rougher. And in doing that, it just pulls up little fibers and a little bit of that gauze. And you want to get the areas that are going to drum on your ear are down in this inside yeah. and down in the over overlap here. And because they're fabric and they're opened up, we can, I can stretch these way up like that and they're gonna go right back to the same place yeah. they were. So I can get my tool in here. And that was just a little snip that we put in there beforehand. Um, and also worth mentioning, we test fit this first. Um, we did test fit that in the skin and you do want to test fit before you rough, um, before you run the rougher because that makes it a little bit tougher to get in there without glue. Now this is just, just lifting up little fabric pieces. Um, be careful with the rougher because it will get you. Yeah. <laughs> I think anyone that's used one very, for very long has probably experienced And you can go different directions if you want to, a little cross hatch. And remember, um, typically if you're going to get drumming on the ear, it's going to be on a inside curve, a con concave yeah. curve, not necessarily around the back. And drumming, we've probably talked about drumming in the ears. Drumming happens when the, oftentimes when the ear skin is tight, um, the fit isn't as good, or your ear skin dries before before your glue adheres. Any shiny surface, if you see a shiny surface, um, scratch it up just a little bit. So we've got a question from Austin, and he would like to know what about the pocket that's in most canines? Um, I wonder if that's he's talking about a uh, little thingy. Fox and coyote type? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the little um, thingy. And like, we usually split that if if that's what he's talking about the little the little you know where it separates um we usually split that to both both pieces yeah take the cartilage out of it if you can get it out of there um fill it full of epoxy scope or clay and then reshape it um, depending on your ear liner um, sometimes you might have to make a little void in it i think all of uh, gary's ear liners have a location for that. Yep. Yep. Um, that's another thing. Um, if if you test your ear ear in the ear skin and that little fold ends up way up here, make sure mm -hmm. this is situated where you want it and and mark that. Like poke poke a little pin through both areas and then cut out that area so you can yeah. yep. position it in the right spot. A um, fit for ear liners, fit for everything is really important, but a fit for a good fit for the ear liner is so important um, to getting a nice, crisp, finished ear. We've talked about that in several different episodes for, for different reasons, but we keep coming back to it because it is, it, it really is important. And um, we always talk about not having, goes right in what you just said, um, not too tight. If these yes. fit, and yes, you can force them to the back of the ear liner, that's not what you want. You want them to lay into the ear liner yeah. so that they're not going to start drying and start shrinking up and pulling away. So like when you're talking about fit, uh, make sure that it's a nice, comfortable, comfortable yeah. fit. Now what we like to do, um, and it's absolutely not necessary, but on African animals, it's really fun to incorporate some blood vessels in here yeah and um, I mean you show a customer what you do to your mouth somebody is shopping I'm going to Africa you know why mm -hmm. should I pick you you know they're they're shopping they're looking for price they're looking for quality they wanna don't wanna 
pay for a Rolex, but they do want a nice job. Yeah. And something that we can give them that um, is really sharp is you know blood vessels because the back of the ears or the ears are so short haired they show yeah. up real good. Yeah. Um, a deer, not so some deer, early season deer maybe, but. Uh, our deer, when you get into winter, you're probably not going to see blood vessels. Maybe after the car oh, hunters yeah. get them, maybe you <laughs> yeah. might find some blood vessels bulging. But uh, um, it's one animal that you can do real yep. easily without a lot of work. And, um, I mean, it's kind of a you know five-minute-per-ear job if you want to. So we like to um, sketch on blood vessels on the back of the ear. Yep. And then we're going to show you how we can put them on pretty easily. Um, if you look at the ear liner or the cartilage when you take it off, a lot of times you can see the, see the blood vessels. I was looking at this one earlier. It's a little, little hard to see. I can see one stripe going down here. And a lot of times there will be about three of them and kind of in the little valleys it seems to be. And they, they're just like little rivulets, one main branch with a couple little offshoots, almost like a little stream. And so what works is to take a Sharpie and sketch on where we're going to put them. Okay. Now, there's overkill to this, which you don't want to do. Um, we're looking at something like this would be a great plenty. This is a deer. And like yep. I said, we typically don't do it on a deer unless it's a real early season bow kill. Um, this is not what you want to do. <laughs> yes, no. And you can do this. You can. If you want to babysit them, that's... Um, I can't imagine a, a customer fit. saying, oh, I'm going to have Brett Winfield do mine because he puts more <laughs> blood vessels in. blood vessels in um, but you can look at, there's a lot of liners that even come with blood vessels yeah. molded yeah. in them. Um, but I would just take a little Sharpie. And I just did something like that. I'll do one down the middle. And we'll give one over here. Happy little blood vessels. Happy little blood vessels, yeah. Good. And those, I bet, are going to show up really well on this super put short haired Elin. Yeah. Or you put them on. Oh, great. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to put these on with hot glue gun. And we do not have. Um, the glue gun that we would choose to use, um, this is a hot, hot melt glue gun, and it's going to put out thinner glue than, than one of the cooler models. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's a Stanley. We had a Stanley, yep. and it's got a high setting and a low setting. And the low setting, the glue comes out a little bit, not as molten, and yep. it doesn't run all over the place. Yep. Um, this is going to be extra hot. I have to be a little careful with it. And it's also going to flatten out slightly. Yes. Now, we're going to build an ear butt, so I'm not really worried about where I start right here because it's going to get covered up with clay. And to show you how fast this is, Now, blood vessels, um, if you look at blood vessels closely, they're, there's bulged areas, there's thin areas, there's all different kinds of blood vessels. So don't worry about if they're lumpy or bumpy.
and be careful also with the fabric gear liner and the hot melt glue. You can... Well, you should have told me that before. <laughs> you can burn a hole through them with the hot, hot glue, but it seems to be working pretty well for us with this glue gun. But if you had a, if you did have a hot, hot glue gun, you'd want to be careful. Not now, the, to... the thing I did is I unplugged this glue gun right when we started talking, so yep. um, it's a little bit less than molten now. Um, so we're going to let that cool for just a second, and it stuck up pretty decently. Um, now when you put glue on there, um, that's going to fill in any ridges. Yeah. It's going to look pretty nice. But all I did was follow my little barren trees. You burn your thumb. Good? Yeah. And it's, it's still not ready, but soon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the next thing um, we do is model them on the mannequin. Yeah, um, the, nice, the nicest way we've found is to pre-model our earbuds. And we, we kind of take a lot of time again to do that. Um, we model them with critter clay, and whether it be a deer or a kudu or a moose or whatever it is, it, it's much nicer to pre-build that earbud. I've seen tremendous taxidermists take the, the clay, and we did it for a long time too. Just stack Just it in, yep. Put it in the skin and pack it around and know what the, if you know what that shape looks like, you can get pretty close and put them together. Um, but we get more consistent results when we pre-build them. And you get a good look at what the animal looks like with his eyes set and his ear yeah. attitude. Um, yeah. It takes a little slight bit longer, but it comes out nice. We've got a question from Ben, and Ben says, I've gotten some parrots from a friend, but I can't find any forms for them. Can you recommend anyone making forms, or will you be doing any lives on how to make Did it? Did you say parrots or carrots? <laughs> parrot. We That's have so parrot good. forms. If I, you look, <laughs> I think we have parrot ear liners in there somewhere. Uh, no. Parrot, it's kind of like, um, if you get in anything like that, I don't think you're going to find them anywhere. Yep. Um, there's a couple ways to do it, and one is to wrap a body. Mm -hmm. And wrapping a body out of wood wool, excelsior, is an excellent method, but it takes practice. Yep. Uh, another method would be to carve one out of um, foam, like yep. two-part foam, um, chunk of a mannequin if you altered a mannequin, and you yeah. save a little piece of styrofoam, that's a good way to do it. Um, You're doing that this week? Yes, we have. Um, I don't know what I did with the body, but and it's not quite ready. Um, but I think, I think. But Tom this is, is for going. one of the um, yeah. conservation um, visitor centers, and it's uh, an eagle. But this is just a sketch of the body with critical measurements, and then um, this is just a. Uh, it was a turkey, wasn't it? <laughs> it looks like uh, a turkey. So this started out being a turkey um, just by measuring the, the shoulder sockets, um, the width, the depth, and the hips, where the hips go. Um, you can do that with a parrot or anything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think we're ready. Uh, one more question quick from Shane. Shane would like to know, after I scratch my liners, I wipe down with acetone is that overkill or practice no I do you that's fine to do um, um, most of those are made with a mold release of some sort yep I think I might prefer to if you're gonna do a solvent maybe do it first and I'm just thinking that a solvent might dissolve some of these little burrs yep. and Good which idea. are kind of nice texture of it. if you if you acetoned it first and then scratched it you'd still have nice little burrs and stuff for it to stick to maybe just kind of thinking out loud um no anything that has a mold release whether it's no matter what kind of plastic part it is um it's really a good idea this except not those does not does not that's one of the nice things about and i don't think that we intended to, to really plug these but that is a nice thing about this elastic here is it does or thermal form ear is it does not require a mold release so and anything you get from us like when it comes to uh um, bird heads or any of that type yeah. of thing or your noses 
um, um, we'll let you know if you have to remove yeah. a mold release. But on most of the things, they're made without a mold release um, so that you don't have to fight that, trying to yeah. glue a bird, bird skin around there or anything that's, like that. That's pretty important. I don't know that a lot of people realize that goes through we go through a lot of effort to make sure that we, yep. we have good adhesion surfaces mm -hmm. um, so we try not to use mold release where we have unless we have to um, so now the next thing we would do is model an ear on mm -hmm. um, do we want to cut to the done one or do one well do you want to start one and yeah show them and then we one. will do that okay um, and like so. Brett was alluding to earlier um, you can see this elin has one ear m muscle or butt already built on and and we have some excellent reference casts by Mark Donnering that we use yeah. on our deer and an elin is n way different than a deer but it, <laughs> but it's the same um, um, and and any of the anatomical features the muscles where the muscles yeah. go um, of course, it's going to be bigger, but it's going to be similar to a buffalo, to a elin, to a white-tailed deer. The, what makes the ear go forward, up, and down is all similar. Yeah, this one might look very white-tailed. White-tailed is going <laughs> to look wonderful. I don't think anybody's, hopefully nobody's going to know. But if you did have an elin cast, now is the time to get it out. Um, and uh, so we've got that one, basically just an ears forward ear. Um, one thing that's pretty important um, anytime you, anytime you set your, your horns, antlers, and ears is to make sure that you've got the location of the ear canal located. Um, and I've got that marked here from the skull. So we took the skull, lined up the eye orbit, lined up the, the slope of the horn, and removed the skull, put this in place, and when we were doing all of that, I marked that um, ear canal location so you can see it. I might even grab it just the skull just to show them. I um, mean that's very important whether you're doing a bird or a fox or an eland um, where that ear originates from the skull is really important for ear location. You get the ears too low he's not going to look right. Get them too high or too far back or uneven it's not going to look right. Um, and this was the skull from the elin here. And so when I put him up here and we match the pitch of the face, we match the front corner of the eye to the mannequin, come back here, we make this cut and also match that ear canal, which is right there. Um, we match that up there. So we know, we just know about where we're gonna start with our ear. Most of the time when you get your African shipments, for instance, you're going to have a skull with it. Yeah. Um, don't, don't discount those skulls yeah. as having no value because just like that, that was an important piece of anatomy for you to know about. Another thing is width of the eyes, um, depth of the head. You can glean a whole lot of accurate material from skulls. I might have left my critter clay. I can keep talking while you're... <laughs> okay, I left the critter clay. I went for the skull, but I and was kind of And you can use any kind of clay. Down. He's going to model this on with, with critter clay, but um, any clay will work. Critter clay is very hard when it starts to dry, and it's very helpful. Um, you want to go get a new yeah. one, or is that okay? No, this is perfect. Oh. This is perfect. Um, it's very helpful when you take that ear off because it's going to hold its shape and we don't want it to crumble apart. Yeah. So there are, there are several different muscles that are going to work together to, to um, move this ear. I am going to just get a base started here. I might even take that, I, we have not set these horns permanently. I might take them off just so I don't knock them off. Get those out of our way for a few minutes. 
And we're just going to start to build the foundation for these um, as soon as I get a little bit of clay in place. I'll build a base big enough to hold that ear, the ear liner, and then we will um, we'll start looking at muscle groups. But for right now, I'm just going to build that bigger. And yep. this is something that we find base. Um, pretty helpful. And this is our white-tailed deer. Um, this is an ears back cast. We also have an ears forward. Um, and it's just, uh, I think Brian Olson labeled one, two, three, four, five, which ones to put on in which order, which is a little bit helpful because muscles do lay over one another um, and aren't of equal heights. Another thing um, he drew on here, the scutiform, and an eland is just like any antelope or deer, they have a scutiform cartilage, which is kind of the hinge, which hinges that ear liner at the top, or the real ear at the top. So um, these all have that in there and they're pretty helpful. So we're just gonna go, I'm still just getting it stuck. That's the biggest thing is just holding it in place. It's, it's a much bigger muscle or muscle group than a whitetail, but we're gonna kind of form them in the same way. You know, you have a, a, a deer or an animal like a, one of our winter deer or a big bull elk, you know, from November. A um, lot of this is not going to show. Any of the African antelope probably is. Yeah. So it's, it's nicer if you spend some time and if you do this wrong, nobody's going to know if, you, if it looks nice. Um, doing, tr try and make any effort to build your muscle groups and matching the right one to the left one. Um, even if you try, if you're not spot on, yeah. it's going to look better than if you took a tennis ball worth of clay and crammed it up in there. Yeah, yeah. at least this way we're, getting, we're able to look at both ears. We can look at them for symmetry and balance and size of the, the ear muscle or ear muscle groups. Um, even if we were wrong, we we're closer it's look than good, isn't it? yeah. It's gonna we're look, closer it's than gonna we would be wrong. otherwise. It's going to be a good wrong, yes, a good wrong. And once you start building um, ear butts on here, and like I said, we do it for every deer, we do it for yes, do. every elk. Um, once you start doing that, you get much, much faster at it, and it's just second nature to know how much to put on and, and where, to, where to put it, and you can become very, very fast at it. Um, another thing worth mentioning, too, is don't be afraid to grab your phone and get some good Google pictures or wiki pictures, wh wherever your favorite source of information is, but the angle and attitude seems to be very specific to each animal. So um, in Elin, the more we looked at pictures, you can see that they were not quite from the uh, from the valley here to the peak of the ears, probably not quite 45 degrees, but um, it was down from that where other other of your African antelope um, will carry their ears a little bit higher. Our North American pronghorn carries them a little higher, um, and you'll just have to kind of rely on your on your reference sources. Mm -hmm. You're going to show me our Elin CD, or CDs, aren't you? Um, I, I was it. going to. Um, there you he, go. Here we go as an Elin. We have excellent, excellent. And here Maybe I we do. I got to find them. I sent them to Google. Shame on me. Um, we have a CD of Elin um, that is like crazy good close-ups and um, I think you get 92 pictures and they're all high resolution exceptional exceptional pictures shame on me 10 merits um, now that I have I kind of have these located and I'm looking at the valley here in relation to the eye orbit and the tips of the ears in relation to each other, and I'm just going to try to balance them. Sorry to get in front of the camera, but um, 
just going to balance them out a little bit. And that's going to be fairly close. There is some adjustment time afterward. Um, but now it's just a matter of doing some of the cosmetic muscle Making it groups. pretty. Yeah. Um, we'll show, Kate, if you want to show them this side first, this is what we're going for. That's probably a decent angle. Um, and we've got one muscle that ties from the back here and comes right back toward the back corner of the eye or the back of the eye orbit. And then we also have the muscle group over top of the scutiform that connects to the top edge of the ear liner or, or ear cartilage. And then the little funny little Y that comes in front of those two and overlaps. So I'll build um, this one. I, I should say I'll build this little bit of a tie-in that comes down the next side. And that we're going to keep, as a general rule, about even with the bottom of the eye orbit. Um, and then this over top, then this, and then we'll put those on, on over top of those. From the front, there's also a little bit of anatomy from the back, but not quite as much. So, now we'll start working over top of that. Uh, we do have a question from Randy. And Perfect. Randy would like to know if you cut a valley or a notch for ear liners to sit in a little on your competitor's choice deer forms like the extreme precision forms have. We have done that. Um, um, yeah. Cut a little, just a little. Trapezoid type thing. Yep, especially on an ear's back. Um, with an ear's back, you may have to take out just a little bit of foam to come back here. This, um, with the African animal, um, all of the head blocks are different and we really didn't have to remove much because the length of the, of the ear cartilage did not, we kind of calipered the back of the head and this head was a little bit narrow compared to our skull. So I know we don't have to remove any, um, to get that out, but yeah, is that what he's talking about? Kind of that Yeah, I recess. think so. Depending on um, your position of your ears back, um, not if you wanted a real extreme ears back, not too many mannequins are gonna be narrow enough for you back there. Yeah. So you will have to take out quite a bit um, between the ears to allow them to go back. Um, most of them are too wide with, in real life it's soft tissue and muscle that folds together and what we have now is hard foam with a block of wood in there too yeah. so some mannequins are wider than others so now i'm going to build that little muscle that's going to tie from these probably all have fancy names that i haven't i'm going to get fast. scolded for not um, i'd call it number two uh, muscle number two <laughs> i like that um, it's going to tie in right underneath here, basically going to shoot for the back of the eye orbit. Um, try this on your next deer. You'll, you know, like be amazed at um, how accurate you can get. Um, when you have hard ear butts like this modeled onto your ear liner, um, my problem is I'll get a ears forward, I'll put both ears forward, and I don't, I'd feel much better, I like it much better if, I'd, if I could tip them back a little bit. When you tip them back, all of a sudden I got a big quarter inch gap with a hard edge yeah. of the ear butt telegraphing through the skin. Yeah. And uh, with clay, um, you're able to do that, you're able to put it exactly where you want it without having to fight any hard-built, man-made shape that you can't do anything with. Yep. So that's where this is extremely versatile um, as far as posing and twinking your ears. For me. Yes, it, it's a, a prefabricated ear, but is nice as a reference. You know, those are nice just to look back at, mm -hmm. but it really is much nicer if you can build your own. Um, my next muscle I'm going to connect up here onto the leading edge of the cartilage, come back here to the 
screw to form. Just build that. A lot of times these muscle groups get built really fat and really thick. And if you look at them, the next time you skin a deer or work with that with a fresh animal, look at those muscles and their bands. They're very, they're actually very thin bands. Um, we tend to overdo those, so be careful you're not over exaggerating those. And don't forget, you're going to be adding probably a strong eighth of an inch of skin and hair over yeah. your entire muscle yeah, besides what you've already overbuilt. So when you start practicing this procedure, um, it's very common for people to go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> and they, and they, they end go up too going big. home. So uh, make kind of when you think, um, I mean, I followed uh, Pat Wagner and Brian Olson around the, the judging yeah. arena and watched them critique, especially deer. Um, and one of the most common things I heard is too big. Yeah. You know, they make, yeah. they make this too big. Might have had it perfect, perfect when they modeled it on like you're doing it. Um, once you put that skin on and glue yeah. and everything else, all of a sudden now you just pumped it up a little bit too everything big. Everything gets bigger. Yep. Less is best. Um, kind of got that about where I want it. Now I'm going to add these little, these little Y-shaped tie-ins. Uh, we've got Ted who is says this is unrelated, but wondering how far behind we are on our mannequin orders. I, I think we've caught up a long ways. I think we have too, and I don't 100% quote me, but did I hear five days? I would say five days. So, yeah, we were, if you like, last, um, we had been at it's... like 14 days. and It's been a struggle to keep up. That's a big credit to the guys downstairs too. They've been really, really, That's really, The really, mannequin really, makers. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty they have incredible. been. Um, we have people that come in in the middle of the night and we yep. have backboard cutters that come in in the middle of the night and um, yes, it's been, thank you for your patronage because <laughs> we, we have made a lot of mannequins in the last few months. Yeah. Seems like orders for two became orders for 20, and then orders sure. for 20 became orders for 60 um, this year. It just seems like everybody's stocking up and bigger orders, and um, that's good. That's really good for, for the supply company, but man. Do you want me to treat the ear while you're doing that? Yeah, yeah, that Your would be. Skin? Yeah, um, I got it right here. I've got some lacquer thinner. If you, oh, you do? Yeah. A little bowl of thinner. A little wire brush. Um, and while Brett's doing that, um, I might as well be making myself useful here. Um, this is the, the skin. Um, I need a right you one. You need the right ear, please. Okay, here's the right one. Um, this is what the skin looks like with the cartilage off. Now, something that we haven't mentioned yet, um, it looks like he got lazy and yeah. he didn't take all the cartilage off all the way down to the canal. There's a little bit of cartilage left on here. And I think where that ever came from is, um, I was doing a competition blacktail one time and I didn't have a lot of time and I need to come up with a method of um, doing the inner ear detail. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if we left the cartilage as it goes down into the, all the different little valleys and, and yeah. nodes and things down in the ear. And I did it and the judge said, the comment on the judge was excellent inner ear detail. <laughs> and the excellent inner ear detail that I did was not taking the cartilage down all the way to the canal and letting that cartilage hold my shape in there. And I did it on a mule deer and kind of had the same comments. <laughs> and I thought I was onto something. So we started doing it with our customer mounts. And this cartilage, by not taking it off all the way down to the canal, um, will hold that thin, thin skin down there into a real natural shape. And if it were to shrink 
and distort, it's still going to be more accurate than going in there with little tools and epoxy and trying to build it. Um, I have heard other taxidermists do it also, um, but it does work pretty good. We came all the way down to where it, where it uh, tapers down over the edge of the main part of the earbud um, and left that on there. Okay, now we like to, we like to um, wash these in lacquer thinner because this came from the tannery. Um, it was a wet tan cape and it's got oil on it. We can assume it has oil on it. Yeah. And uh, so we're just gonna take it, wash it in lacquer thinner. This is a process that, that takes some time. Don't rush it, um, be thorough, and you'll have much less drumming. So I'm just, I just have a little wire brush. Any kind of wire brush will work. Be gentle, because the seams are split to the very edges. Another thing you did that is worth mentioning is, you notice there's a, a little cut line right down the center, and Brett has taken like a scalpel or a sharp knife, and you have those um, spines, I guess, for lack of a better term, um, down the, the ear, he should have about three of them, and you took a, something sharp and you split those, which is gonna give you a lot more width in that ear skin. Oh, that works pretty nice. It, it just gives you a little bit extra play there, and if you were competing, you'd probably do that, and then locate them all in your ear liner, and work them in, but we're just gonna use the extra skin um, to help keep from drumming. And now again, nice the ear. drumming part typically happens on the inside of the ear, um, the concave part, but I am washing the whole thing. So now you'll think I'm spending a lot of time on this and it <clears throat> really doesn't matter. It's a little bit of overkill, but when your ears drum, you'll think, oh, I wish I'd have spent another few minutes washing. Okay, I think I've, I've got about as much oil off of there as I, I think I can. There's no way to tell. Um, I just have to assume I did. Now I'm going to take a towel and I'm going to absorb as much lacquer thinner as I can. Some people use um, lacquer thinner. Um, some people use acetone. We like lacquer thinner. It gives you um, just the right amount of drying time, I guess I'd say. Okay, then I'm gonna take a hair dryer and dry this, but we don't wanna dry it, dry it so much that it shrinks up. We wanna dry it um, just so it starts to lose its coldness, kind of. This works pretty good. We could mount a lot of animals this way. I know. We should, we should keep going, going, going. Oh, whenever you, any of you um, bird people or working on ears, things like that, um, a hair dryer with a cool setting is exceptionally helpful. Um, when yeah. you apply heat to any taxidermy, um, piece of taxidermy, like a bird skin or an ear, you're probably asking for trouble. So a cool setting is great. Warm I will use sometimes. Very seldom will you see me use hot. Okay, I've got it um, 
semi dry, it still needs to be dried a little bit more. But at this stage, I like to take the detail rougher and I'm going to skip it across the surface of the inside of the ear. You can do the outside too, the back of the ear, but I'm, you got to be careful so you don't tear it. But by doing that, I'm suading this leather. And when you suede that leather, it gives the glue something to grab onto. Now I have shown people how to do this and they've ripped 30 holes in their ear. <laughs> with one swipe. With one swipe, yeah, with one swipe. So be careful. Um, any hole that you make should be small enough it doesn't need to be repaired. But I can, I can see I'm lifting up all kinds of little leather tags and that makes me think that glue is going to stick really nice. Um, now, Kate, I think I can show them, it's not the prettiest, but I can show them where we are with this now so that we can move to the other side. Um, I have the second ear modeled on. Um, I've got uh, the basic muscle groups in there. They're, they're close. And then I've also got, I'm not going to spin him all the way around, but we've got a nice little tie-in in the back. Some of this is going to break when we cut it, and that's the next thing we're going to show you, um, is that we're going to cut this pink ear off. Um, we're going to cut this one off, and then we're going to put that in the ear skin that Tom's prepping. Um, in order to keep our clay from falling apart, we're going to cover it with a glue. And we're going to just use our Dermagrip hide paste. You could use your, your normal, or I'm sorry, our Dermagrip ear adhesive. Um, you could use a normal hide paste if you wanted to. Um, but we like this. This has been working really well for us. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, so I'm going to start. If you read the directions that come with your um, ear adhesive, which directions are optional, right? But every now and then, if you happen to peek at them, the ear adhesive mentioned um, putting a prime, basically a primer coat on the inside of the ear liner. And that seems to be one of the, it seems to be a game changer for consist, good consistent adhesion. Um, and so while I'm doing the clay itself, I just did a little on the interior of the ear. I'll go over the backside too. And it does help promote adhesion over those uh, blood vessels as well. So I'm just going to give this a coat and coat all of the clay. And um, that's the one thing about clay is that it does air dry. And it would not hold together very well. It gets real mushy if we tried to cut it off now. But what we found is that if, it, if you leave it overnight and do nothing to it, you're probably going to come in in the morning and it's going to be half of it will be laying on the ground, if not all of it. Um, but if we cover it with a layer of glue, that seems to get enough of a seal that it doesn't break apart, but it still dries enough to firm up and uh, works pretty well to give us a nice ear. Now, we modeled this ear today, like I said, overnight's a little better. This other ear, um, we'll still cut it off and you'll see it. it'll be a little bit on the soft side, but it'll come off and glue in pretty nice. So that's kind of what we're after, just a nice coating over the ear and all of the clay work, and we'll let that sit. We'll let it sit overnight. So back to our fancy cooking show yeah. techniques. Now, I think dun, dun, dun. last week we mentioned um, when we show somebody how to do this, deal with one ear, mount yeah. one ear, that's your project. 
number yeah. one project. Forget about two ears and around the horn, da da da, and the nose. One ear, we're going to deal with one ear. Yep. When we're happy, we're going to deal with the other ear. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get overwhelmed. Um, and you know, another another advantage to doing that is if you glue these ear liners in the night before mounting, um, it just seems to give you a really nice stick. Um, so then do you put it in the refrigerator or freeze it or what do you do? Um, could do either. We A lot of times if we know we're going to mount the cape the next day, if we have it out, say for instance this afternoon, we're going to mount him tomorrow, um, I would just leave him in the fridge. I just put both ears, if we glued in the ears, put the ears up very carefully, fold him. We like to use a tub or something like that so it it protects it a little bit in the refrigerator and um, we fridge him overnight. But um, Now the next step is going to be to give you the ear liner. I'm going to get a bigger knife to cut that off. Um. Um. When you uh, use the hair dryer and put it inside of the ear, if it's split all the way to the edges, um, you get a real, you'll, you'll see that it is with the hair dryer. Um, and then also, we also feel for the edge, but you get a real satisfying shape, you know, yeah. as it's inflating. Yep. Now, I'm gonna cut this off, Kate. You wanna come up here, yep. And, I'm just going to come across the back of the clay and make one nice cut and then I'm going to cut straight in here and you can cut anywhere you want to. These are just areas that I think I can get it back to and not break the and not break the clay so bad when we put the cape over it. So all the muscle you build, or most of it, comes off like that. Yeah. And it'll mesh right back in where it did before. So that's what we have. Kind of show them some of the muscle detail there if you want to. I got to blow yeah. for a few more seconds and it'll be okay. all yours. And I will blow it up. So now we're just going to glue this up with our same Dermagrip ear adhesive. Now you want to stop short of toasting this. I don't want to get it so dry. If you've been in this business very long, you know that that all skin it has a real nice stretch to it, and when it dries, it stops. It stops exactly and starts shrinking the other way, I guess. Yeah. So so make sure that you still have nice stretch. If I dried this too much, all it takes is a squirt of water, and we're good to yeah. go again. But um, you you want a nice nice dry surface, doesn't feel cold and clammy. Uh, Craig says, just did a fallow deer with fabric ear liner. Didn't seem to be enough room for the cartilage ear butt, so I cut the ear liner to make room. Bad idea? Not if it worked. Perfect. <laughs> um, that's what we kind of did with this. Yep. Cut it so it, I don't have one here, but cut it so it opens up. Yep, just a little snip right through the bottom and and then we're going to clay right back over it. Now, if you if you took all of your cartilage out, um, then it'll fit. If you leave a little of your cartilage in, you'll have to snip it open at the bottom, yeah. right? Yep. And worth noting too, I've got just a little bit of clay 
in the bottom here. So I'm just going to take that and cut that out so I can push, if I need to push the cartilage through, I can. We got Lisa who says, sorry to go off sub subject, but do you know why a lot of places are no longer selling gallon containers of Bondo? Also, what is the best mache to use instead of Bondo for the skull cap? I need something that does not chip away when I remove it. Thanks in advance. Can't get gallons of Bondo, is that it? Yes, yeah, she's wondering why. Mm -hmm. um, I, that I, seemed to be a little more of an issue three months ago and is getting better in some places. I think the price went up. I do think the price went up quite um, a bit. Um, yeah, we can still, We're still still get it, but it is more expensive. Um, um, I don't know if I needed to do something, I'd use polyester resin and a filler, but but I I think that's going to be hard to get too. Yeah, um, but we have really good luck setting antlers with mache, um, with our premium mache. Um, um, just just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Um, I took that stick to turn this inside out. Be careful when you do that so you don't tear it. Um, this ear has been split as good as I've ever seen an ear split. It is beautifully <laughs> all the way to the very, very tip. And that's how you get a mount that doesn't have curled over ears. So if, you, if this is a new, new to you or if you haven't quite perfected, you're taking the um, cartilage out, strive for getting every little speckle All the on way it. to the edge. It, it's worth the extra time. It really, really is worth the time. Um, all, all dried up and ready to go, I huh? I think so. Nice. You might want to check it. Well, oh, looks great to me. And now it's just simply a matter of, of sliding this, the glued up ear liner and clay ear butt right into the ear skin. Um, ooh, that's nice. That's very, that's going to go in there good. And just like you said, it was split to the end, so now we've got to work it all the way to the end. Get our ear liner all the way to the end, and then I like to just work it back. Once I get to the front, we just start sliding it back, and, and your, your form rougher is, is a great tool to do that, um, to work that skin. It gives just a little bit of grab and helps you get a hold of that skin to pull it back. And now it's just a matter of lining up all the edges and babysitting and, and really, like you said a little bit ago, mount one ear and babysit that ear until you're really, really, yeah. really confident yeah. that it's exactly how you wanted it. Do I have the right one and the right one and the left one and the left one? Uh oh. I think we're good. <laughs> that gets done a lot. That, that's, that's funny, haha. -ha. But when you're working with different species that, that some, some of the African ears turn up yep. and some of them turn down, um, that's worth paying attention to. Look at your reference because that's very important. And now um, We've got a nice fit. Everything is touching the back. It's not drumming across there. Um, the, the valley comes right back to the valley where it goes. I can push that cartilage that we left all the way down here, right to the bottom. And you of cut the a clay. hole, you cut some of that clay down to make, I, to accommodate it? Yep, I did, just to, just to make sure I'd have a little bit of room there. And if I needed to, I could push it through. Um, I don't think I have And now that clay was through. done yesterday, correct? Uh, actually, this morning. This morning. Yeah. Um, usually, a lot of times, we'll leave them overnight. But even overnight, you will have some give yeah. with that clay. You yep. can spread it. You can compress it without it breaking. If I, if I had my preference, we would have done that last night, but I wasn't ready. Um, but uh, yeah, it it's, uh, seems to be holding together really well. Um, a few things. Look at your reference material, but this this edge here, we want to make sure that that's going to roll around nice and neat and natural. This hair comes in, protects the inner ear. Um, same on the bottom. This comes up, 
Make sure and get your edges just absolutely as close to perfect as you can get them. And once all of that is in place, it's nice to come back and work this, this skin on the back side. If you can see that, Kate, but I'm gonna just start that. Okay, now somebody's gonna ask, they did everything exactly the way you did it, and they left it for the night, and they came in in the morning, and it's drummed away it's from the inside. Mess. What do they do? Call Tom, because <laughs> Brett will be gone. <laughs> um, no, if, if, if it didn't stick overnight, um, it can always be rehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, that's the nice thing about the, the water-based glues. There are epoxies that when you walk away, they're stuck. Hopefully. We used epoxies for years, and we thought that was the way to go. Yeah. Um, but like you said, when it's stuck, you're stuck. Yeah, and it's either stuck down or it's not, and that, that makes it tough. But, um, but you can, I'd rather have something a little softer, but just I'm just following blood vessels. If, if you had an ear that wasn't exactly how you wanted it in the morning, um, you can always come back and rehydrate the skin and continue working it. And we're just gonna trace some of these, these blood vessels that we put in with the glue. And you can feel them um, and just go very softly. Make sure you're not cutting through the leather and make sure that you're not um, disrupting the hair. But I'm just gonna use this to kind of bring some of that I don't know if you can get in. And that's already a really pretty closer. ear. Closer. But I think that's hard to see because of the color, but you can see where those. Non taxidermists yeah, probably those. wouldn't understand this, but when you have something that fits well and taxis into position well and yeah, sticks, we it's a thing of beauty. There we go. Now you can kind of see it. You can see where those are. You can see where this is. This longer one is coming in here over the top. And now it's just a matter of babysitting. And, and I think the the one mistake people could make is overdoing this. You don't want to make it look like his little blood vessels are going to rupture. So if you come back tomorrow and they're a little bit on the soft and subtle side, that would actually be better than way over tooled. But it's a nice feature. Um, just one of the many little, the many little things that African game mm -hmm. allows you to do with the, with the shorter hair will do the same thing on on the face i think they may have seen that on the sable mm -hmm. even on the elk mm -hmm. um, we added that to the short haired elk there and um, it's just another way to set your work apart from from the rest ears are really important i mean eyes you know everybody thinks it's in the eyes and it is but if your eyes have a really nice soft eye set that looks natural and your ears are all wiggly and crinkly um, you didn't sell a customer. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have customers come in all the time that, you know, are kind of tire kicking in the fall and they're wondering who's going to, you know, do their deer. And we show them the, the ears. We let them feel yeah. for drumming um, and yeah. check out the edges. And when, you, when you're confident in your, you know, job of your ear liner, um, it's easy to impress a customer. Yeah. Yeah. One of many things, all of this stuff, you know, that's a, that's a really good point too. All of these things are great features, but more than likely they're going to have to sell them to their customer and yeah. show and get credit for the work that you're doing. Um, if you don't tell your customer to recognize and notice these things, they may, although they appreciate a really nice and natural deer, they may not understand the extra work that it goes through. Um, not a whole bunch of extra time, but it did take us mm -hmm. a little bit more work to Your liners are not this. instant. Yep. Yeah. But we do think the, the effort that we put into them is well worth it. 
That's a nice ear. I think that's going to be nice. I think he's going to. And he's gonna and really well. And if I were to look way down in here, I see about <laughs> as natural of a Eland inner ear. Ooh, my hands are dirty. Um, <laughs> I see about as natural of an inner ear as you could ever get. Yeah. And it's because you got lazy and didn't take the cartilage <laughs> yeah, off. I got lazy and didn't take the cartilage off. It's beautiful. Off. That's right. That's right. Okay. I hope we helped you. And it doesn't matter if it's an eland, if it's an elk, if it's a yeah. rabbit. We still kind of do them the same way, yeah. don't we? It all applies. It all applies. I bet there's three, four other times in the library of working on ears for them, um, whether it be a deer or an elk or whatever other project. But same thing, I think if you go back, we may have added the, the blood vessels to this one because mm -hmm. they show, but it's, it's and you pretty don't have much to. the same process. Um, but it sure makes a nice ear. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we got a nice giveaway today too, don't we? Yes, we are giving away a pint of the pink ear liner Dermagrip adhesive. We like it. I mean, you. Um, Pro One is a great product. It works. It, it, it works really, really nice. Um, Dermagrip oh. is a great product. The Dermagrip yeah. grip Hide Glue. You may have your own favorite, favorite. Yeah. But this is what you get today. Um, and this is really nice too. We've talked about it before, but it does dry to a nice natural fleshy tone, which is really nice for some of this African stuff where you get some of those flesh tones underneath. Um, um, works really good. And the winner goes to Ryan Lee Martin. Ryan? Ryan yes. Congratulations, yes. Ryan. I think you'll like it. And he had to like and share, like and share. Yes. So like <laughs> and right. share this That's video right. to be entered in next week's giveaway. Or not next week. Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> like and share this video. We're going to be <laughs> flexible there, this summer. There will be another giveaway. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And I hope you learned something. Um, give it a try, and I think you'll have a better yeah. mount.